Welcome back to the Infinite Life podcast. This is Katish, and this week we have Max licking my foot underneath the table as I'm recording. So I can't help but giggle for the introduction. But anyway, this week we have a wonderful guest with us, Cindy Porter. Cindy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Katish. I'm very excited to be here. Great, we're uh, excited to have you. I'm not surprised um, Max wants to get in on the action. That is oh. my thing after all, the animals. The animals, I know, a good old lick under the table. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so for those of you who are regular listeners to the podcast, you will have heard a very special episode, which was episode nine. If you haven't listened to episode nine, then you can, at the end of this episode, you can go back and listen to it. And in that episode, Cindy took me to the Akashic Records. So if you haven't seen that episode, either on YouTube or uh, listen to it on the podcast, at the very end of this, you can go back and listen to that so you can understand the connection with why I would like to talk to Cindy today. So Cindy is not only a, an Akashic Records guide, but if you're watching this version on YouTube, rather than just listening to us, you will be able to see behind Cindy is a wall full of beautiful paintings with animals. Now, if you are listening to this via the podcast, we can describe to you that they are beautiful coloured, um, and I, I'm not, actually not sure the medium, are they, what's the medium that they're all drawn in? Um, uh, two different mediums, uh, watercolour uh, for some and acrylic for others. Okay, so we've got a tiger, a dragon, koala, unicorn, gorilla, wombat? Yep. Giraffe, kookaburra, green tree frog, tiger, tiger, and is that an owl behind? It's actually a macaw hiding behind a the macaw. Kookaburra okay. there. Yep. Yes. So if you're listening to the podcast, you can imagine there is two easels, one to either side of Cindy. Cindy's in the middle, and behind her on the back wall is a blue wall, which is covered in her artistic creations as well. So now you've I've set the scene for those of you who are listening. You can imagine that in your mind. So, Cindy, we're here to talk today about the wonderful world of animals, yes. your connection with animals, why you paint animals, and what the heck that's got to do with the spirit world. <laughs> okay. That's so, a, where would you like to start? What, um, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure where I should start. Um, I've always had an affinity with animals. I suppose I could start there. Um, mm -hmm. Always from as young as I can remember back in, in my lifetime, animals have always been my thing, my comfort zone, my whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, some kids walk around and they have like a, a security blanket or something like that. I was the, the child that had the animal in tow, basically. <laughs> Um, when I was, um, very young, I was given my first puppy by friends of the family. Um, and, uh, that was a Samoyed and we grew up together and yeah, my love of animals just grew and grew and grew. I just have always felt a connection there. Um, don't know how so, else to describe it. So what kind of animals have you had in your lifetime so far? Um, uh, as pet animals you're talking about, mm -hmm. I've yes, yeah. had um, uh, cats and dogs, um, been stuck to pretty much just cats and dogs. Um, I did have a bird at one stage, um, but uh, always had uh, large dogs um, uh, that were my own pets. Um, I've had uh, the Samoyed when I was like was given to me when I was two years old that we I grew up with. Um, then as a family, we had um, Samoids after that while I was still growing up um, and living at home. Um, when I was out on my own, I have had uh, German Shepherd, Rottweiler and Alaskan Malamutes okay. um, and Blue Heelers as well. Um, always lots. Um, I have always loved cats as well. Um, hopefully we don't get too interrupted by Henry, one of my current cats. Um, he loves to get in on the action. Um, 
just like Max does apparently <laughs> for you. Um, but, uh, and I've got Cleopatra as well, but she's a quiet little thing and she rarely comes and interrupts um, okay. at all. And how did the painting start? Why, why animals and how did you start painting and drawing? Okay, um, I've always been artistic um, right from childhood and I used to paint on occasion as a child, um, growing up at home and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you grow up and you go into your chosen career fields and things like that. And um, that got put to the wayside pretty much. Um, I went into nursing and uh, uh, did that uh, for many years um, and then went into medical admin and that went on. And it wasn't until only a few years ago now uh, my husband uh, got very, very ill and was in hospital. Um, and he was in hospital for over six months. Um, four and a half of those months, he was non-communicative in any form whatsoever. Wow. Um, he wasn't quite classed as catatonic, but he was very close. And um, that was a rather harrowing time. And uh, I needed something to basically uh, keep my mental health in a half decent place mm. going through that. Um, and uh, I saw one of my friends online uh, was participating in the 100 day challenge. Um, and I decided why not? It's not like I had anything better to do except worry about my husband at the time. Um, and how we were going to survive this, what was happening and all the rest of it. Um, so I would come home from the hospital every night and uh, paint a painting. Okay. And it grew from there. Uh, once I started, basically, I didn't want to stop. Animals were always my subject. I didn't think about painting too much else. At the start of the 100 days, I painted a, a few scenery paintings and a few... Um, like uh, there's one that I don't really put out there much, but it's basically um, just two big gates in front of a fiery pit and things like that, you know, how I was feeling at the time, um, rather lost and so forth. Um, uh, there's a couple like that that I did at the start of that uh, first 100 day session. But um, after that, yeah, I started painting animals and that just gave me so much more peace and joy and comfort and I just haven't stopped. Okay, beautiful. Um, it's interesting what people go to draw or doodle or, you know, um, if I look back at myself, if you were to ask me if I was to become a painter, what would I paint it? It would be flowers. I don't know, yeah. I'm just always drawing flowers. I like to be around flowers. Um, I like aromatherapy. I like flower essences, flowers are my thing. But if you ask me, um, do I do any of that? The answer is no. And then if you say, well, what do you do? You know how some people make those amazing doodles. I, I'm a big doodler, just like my mum is a big doodler. And it wasn't until I got my sole contract done, um, which that takes your name and does the numerology behind it and then looks at the sacred symbols everything that I've been doodling since I started doodling turned up in my soul contract, the wow. exact shapes and symbols. <laughs> wow. So the link to what this is, isn't it interesting how what you draw mm. actually has a spiritual linkage? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It is. I, I think it's more that we, the more we start to connect with um, the divine ourselves, the more and more that, that all comes through in the things that we do. Now, you are somebody who can connect people with their spirit guides and yes. their animal spirit guides. Yes. So tell me how it happened that you were able to connect with and understand that animals could be spirit guides. Yeah, okay. Um, my journey was a bit of a strange one because seriously, um, only a couple of years ago, I knew nothing of any of this. I was the complete ignorant human, um, knew nothing of the spirit 
world knew nothing of any of it. Um, I got introduced to Joanna Hunter by a friend of mine and uh, felt a real pull and a connection to uh, her and her courses. I um, signed up to do uh, work with her and um, that is where um, I did my Akashic Records certification course and it was through doing that that I uh, learnt that I was able to yeah help mm, people okay. connect and everything that's where I okay I assumed that maybe you had always had animal oracle cards or you know anything like that no okay right Very I had interesting. yeah I had none of it I was the complete ignorant person knew nothing of any of anything basically okay um, so when you did that course with Joanna and you realized that you could connect with um, animal spirits animal spirit guides what did that open up for you uh, everything <laughs> pretty much <laughs> um, um, it, it, it was really amazing it's it's quite funny because the course was part of a package that I signed up to do it is not something that I think by looking at it, I would have ever chosen to sign up to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it's amazing how um, uh, spirit leads us uh, to where we need to be and to the things that we need to, to do and share and everything. Um, so like, because it was part of the package, I was going to do the course. That's mm -hmm. just it, you know, I paid for the package. I was going to get the most out of what I could. But when, as soon as I started uh, the course, um, uh, Joanna had an interesting way of dealing with it. She basically um, uh, threw us all in at the deep end, shall we say, um, in the way that she, she trains and trains you and things. And um, it was really fascinating because I thought for sure, being the um, ignorant person that I felt that I was at that time, how the hell was I going to be able to do any of these things that she's saying? Mm -mm. But I could straight away. And it was like, oh my God, I'm really good at this. How can I be really good at this when I'm only just learning what it is? You know, there was all of that amazement on my part and surprise <laughs> and shock. And, but it was fascinating to me and I loved it. And I, I loved the thought of being able to help people find guides and especially because of my affinity with animals, because of my love of animals, being able to connect people with their animal guides to help them and know that they have those guides there to call on when they need them or um, just to know that they're not alone in, in certain things and, you know, that they're going through and, and all of that. So yeah interesting um to me that would suggest and you don't have to answer this question but if, it, if to me it would suggest for somebody to go into a course not have any previous interest in spirituality um or you know you hadn't been following joanna for 10 years or you know whatever you hadn't had stacks of books or oracle cards or whatever that would suggest to me that potentially you had had other lives that had spiritual lifetimes, specific spiritual lifetimes, and that you accrued that knowledge and then were able to go when when this current lifetime go said, right, I'm going to give her this breadcrumb and she's going to bring that knowledge in suddenly. Interesting that you say that. I have <laughs> not I have not explored my Akashic records of my own record enough. Um, because I've never actually thought to inquire about that particular oh, okay. thing interesting um however i'm pretty sure the answer to that is yes because i got full body shivers when you were talking about it mm. and that's usually a, an automatically an automatic sign um that yeah what you're talking that comes <laughs> <Henry>. confirmation <laughs> by henry yep yeah no it's because you know one of the things that i talk about that is that our, here he comes yeah our spiritual knowledge and also our technical knowledge as well mm. um 
doesn't stop when you die. Do you know what I mean? Like people no, think exactly. Yes. People think, oh, well, if this reincarnation thing is true, then what a waste that you have one lifetime and then you die and then you lose that and then you have to learn all over again. And we know with people who come in as geniuses, say musical geniuses or whatever, uh, literary geniuses from a young age, they've brought that in from their past life, you know. Mm -hmm. And so your painting ability clearly has to come in from a previous creative life and so in my mind it's pretty clear that spiritual knowledge has come in through another lifetime as well so for yeah. me that's just like just yeah like c comes after b kind of a yeah. knowledge but um to others that's like that is a new concept for them so i just want to state that that you know sometimes uh, the point of this lifetime is that there are other things that you need to experience first before you can come and reactivate those natural talents that you have accrued over many lifetimes. It, yeah. it's, it's a timing thing and divine timing is really, really important. And understanding divine timing is probably one of the most difficult things that there is on a, on a human's journey because if you're like me and fairly impatient, then you want it to happen right now. Spontaneously, yes. But it will happen when it's Time. ready to happen. Yep. And uh, we just have to keep our eyes and ears and all our senses open for that to be allowed. And we can miss it. Yeah. You know, we have human will. We can decide to block those signals. So we have the artistic talent and we have the connection with the animals and we have the spiritual talent. So tell me, you didn't connect with, in, when you went in the Akashic Records with past spiritual life, but did going into the Akashic, Akashic Records uh show you the spirit animals that you have so i i believe you have many spirit um animals that's correct but is that how you identified with them is that how you first realized that they were there through going into an akashic record session or how did that unfold for you um it wasn't the first uh time i went into the akashic records um it was in a couple of meditations after that Okay. Um, that uh, the spirit animals started uh, coming into me and, yeah, coming into me plenty, shall we say. <laughs> okay. Um, so in yeah. what ways? What ways? Well, like I would uh, sit and do my daily meditations where I would sit and um, reconnect myself to source and I'm light web activated. So like I would like to, I would go to my light web node as such um, for those do I need to explain about light web a little bit maybe? Uh, just in non-Joanna terms because I think that's a very specific Joanna um It's her term. terminology, yeah. yeah. So basically um, light web is um, like the grid that holds everything together, I suppose is the easiest non-term way to say it maybe. Um, and every... Every individual has their own node. It's just not all of us are turned on. Okay. So the node is not turned on as such. This is the easiest way I can explain it. Yes, Henry. Okay. So it's like familiar. it's like the grids that there are on Earth, um, but there's the etheric version. Yes. 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 Okay. That's a good way all to right. put it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because um, one of my one of my sessions, the uh, the client. In the past life, she had her node on her hand. Yep. So okay. I have experienced it, even though I haven't experienced it. If you know yep. what I mean. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I became light web activated, um, so that my node is turned on. And mm -hmm. um, so for me, when I meditate, I tend to go to my node okay. um, because it's the source of everything. So. <laughs> Everybody wears a cattail as an accessory, don't they? <laughs> That's right. Yep, yep. cattails on your shirt. Um, so, yeah, I go up to my node to do my, my daily meditations and it just helps me feel more connected to source and um, everything um, to help receive guidance and, and all of that. So uh, what happened was after doing uh, the initial of the Akashic Records, going up to my node and um, connecting in, I found that during those meditations, I had lots of animals coming in to visit oh, okay. um, continually um, every time I was meditating. Um, and that's from there, I started looking more and more into um, 
the meanings behind the spirit animals and asking more questions while I was on my white, on my node um, and seeking the answers that way um, about it all. Okay. Yes. And so can you tell us about one of the animals? Well, I'll tell you about my current. Okay. Uh, firstly, like I said, we have more than one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of my regular ones is the tiger. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I love painting tigers. I paint them regularly. Um, and uh, this one is my favorite current painting of my tiger. This one is called Smile. <laughs> and have you seen a tiger in real life? Sorry, have, have you I? Seen a tiger in real life? Yes, yes several times several times and I did that all before I knew anything else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've always been drawn to them. Okay. Um, for my whole life for as long as I can remember, which I think is also very interesting, mm. which is why I think there's such a strong spiritual animal for me, uh, such a strong guide. Um, because yeah, I've always had this affinity with them. Um, yeah. So yeah, the tiger is one of my, my strongest and, each different animal, they they come to us at different times when we need different things in our lives. Um, so it's like even people that aren't overly spiritually aware, if you're starting to see a particular animal pop up in lots of different places um, at one time, um, like, you know, you might see on television, so if we're talking about the tigers okay so i might be scrolling through facebook and somebody has put up a great tiger picture and then i'll be watching tv and there's some ad for the zoo and there's tigers on there and things if it's continually popping up in a, a small amount of time that spirit animal is trying to get your attention okay. um we don't always pay attention to that and there are reasons for each different animal coming into your life and it's the strengths that that animal brings that they're trying to either bring you aware of something that you should be doing or something that you need uh, in your life, or they're trying to help you guide, help guide you through a situation that you're going through. And they're offering their strengths to help support you through whatever is happening. Okay. And so without going into the specifics of why the tiger is for you right now, generically, what does a tiger represent? Um, independence, strength, um, family as well, but it's a bit of a different family connection. Um, it's not the traditional family connection as such. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to feel into what I should answer. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Um, I mean, because it... I'm tempted just to pull out my books because that's what I always do. Yeah, no, we want to hear it from you. Yeah, what yeah, do you feel? Exactly. You? That, yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's why I haven't done it. Um, but yeah, the, like the courage. Yeah, courage is definitely one. Um, uh, courage and that strength to actually. Um, uh, you know, stand independently and, uh, and, um, that is something that, yeah, I think that's why the tiger is so strong for me because it's something that I struggle with. I, um, rely very heavily on my relationship with my husband. Um, like he's my support and I rely on that very heavily. Whereas I think with things that have happened with us, like when he was very, very ill and I was on my own and all of that, I think the, the tiger has stayed strong in my world to, you know, show me that I have that, um, independent, um, capability and yeah. Okay. And you, I know from talking to you prior to turning the record button on that you have another animal that is, um, strong. I do. Another one that comes up a lot for me is the crow or the raven. Okay. Um, and yes, I probably have a painting for just about every animal. Just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> so how, what, what's the difference to you when the raven or crow comes? 
Um, I have not explored that as much mm -hmm. um, at all, and I'm not as familiar, but they do keep popping up, and that is my neglect on my part for not spending enough time uh, and following that through. Exactly, I know, my own words. Um, but they do tend to... Uh, it, the raven tends to come more um, only in specific times, whereas the tiger's presence tends to, uh, especially at the moment, tends to be there all the time for me. Mm -hmm. um, so presently that is my main um, animal spirit guide, um, whereas the raven is just one that has popped in and out of my life um, uh, quite a lot of times. Mm. Uh, I was watching a documentary the other day, and I'll I'll send you the link later. The yep. raven is actually the spirit animal um, for the Tower of London. Oh, there you go. That's interesting. Go. <laughs> uh, and That's very they, interesting. they actually kept. They've got special uh, enclosures, and there is a bee feeder who is in charge of the ravens and it's a very prestigious thing in the Tower of London to be in charge of looking after the ravens. So that may give you some clues. You can go and I'll, I'll send you the link and you can have mm. a look and see what the message that the royalty over the thousands of years have seen in the the presence of the raven. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting because like where you start is you start by looking at the animal's traits. And ravens, for one thing, are extremely intelligent. Hmm. Like they are very, very intelligent. They're also very cautious um, around new things. So um, there's that as well. Um, they, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Henry's just decided that ravens yeah, don't interest him. Yep. yep, they're not his thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like um, I start by looking at the animal traits and um, examining those sort of things, but that's as far as I've got with the raven. I haven't looked further into that, um, okay. like I said, which I now feel very ashamed of. And well, don't feel ashamed. There's no, and no shame. Like no... I, yeah, I know. No You're shame. No, no shame. shame bad no thing. Guilt, exactly. No self yep. Exactly. <laughs> so. Uh... Out of the sessions that you've had so far with spirit animals, have you had anyone have an unusual animal? Like, have you had somebody come up with you, say the unicorn, like you've got in the back there? No, no, not really. Um, I've had um, somebody um, come up with a locust, which was interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, I thought that was that was unusual. Um, but uh, I won't talk too much about that. But, no, but they um, must have an abundance as one of their things. There's always an abundance of them. Always. Um, and uh, the traits, when I went and examined and looked at the symbolisms and meanings and, and all of that of the locust actually fitted exactly her circumstances. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing when I'm holding sessions uh, with clients is um, I always tell them like uh, don't expect it to be like a tiger or a lion or you know some big fancy animal um, that you think it's going to be. It could be as simple as like a stag beetle um, but there'll be a reason why that spirit animal is coming forward and just be really open to that because it will suit exactly the position of your life um, at that point in time. Mm, um, absolutely. And yeah, that's the important part. So tell us for people who aren't familiar with your with your website and your your offerings, what is the spirit animal package that they can undertake with you? So because of my love of the Akashic Records work, which I I get so much joy from and my love of painting, what I have done is I have packaged that up together basically where I will take a client on a uh, guided meditation to meet their spirit animal or their spirit guide at that time because um, like I said there's more than one. Um, so their current uh, spirit animal guide and then after that session I will create a bespoke painting for just for them, paint a new painting 
um, and then ship out that original painting to them along with um, a nice certificate which has all the traits and um, everything of that current spirit guide and yeah beautiful now a unicorn in your session with Cindy is valid if you get a um, a dung beetle it's valid like maybe exactly. you went through some shit in your life but you know um, yeah. there there is a message and there are multiples so to be open to whatever your mind imagines because imagination is a good thing you know as Albert Einstein said imagination is and creativity are more important than knowledge because we can't access knowledge unless we allow ourselves to enhance and follow the, the creativity follow the imagination to see what our brains are actually trying to tell us because we're so construed in the it must be written down it must have been scientifically mm. proven verified triple beta tested for it to be real when actually our minds are a continuous stream of consciousness that doesn't begin or end and they know a lot more than we do in this current mortal absolutely body so pay attention to what your brain is telling you guys it's yep. sending you signals and it's time to start paying attention and trust trust in what you're getting Yes, trust in what you're getting. That's right. Trust is, mm. <laughs> trust is a big one for me. Trust is my word of the year. Your word of the year? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it, that has been really fascinating. So I can highly recommend that you go and connect with Cindy. Cindy, what's the actual URL of your website so you can say it out loud for people who are listening? Okay. Um, www.cindyporterartist, or one word dot com dot au okay perfect and you have a presence on which social media so i'll link them in the show notes but which social media accounts do you most prefer and is the body of your work okay i'm on pretty much just about everything you name it i'm probably on it mm -hmm. um and most of them are under cindy porter artist um uh uh Twitter is only Cindy Porter Art because there's too many letters. <laughs> um, but uh, I use Facebook probably the most and um, I like my YouTube channel as well. I'm getting back to using that more now as well. Okay. So um, if you're looking to find out more, either head directly to Cindy's website, her YouTube channel or her Facebook channel if you're still on Facebook. Perfect. So yeah. thank you so much for your time today and I hope that... Uh, for everybody listening to this, that you start paying attention to the signs and the messages sent to you mm. by the animal kingdom. If you would like to either take up a Akashic Records session where you can learn about a whole range of things, including past lives, or you would like to learn who your spirit guides are or your animal spirit guides are, then Cindy is your gal. So thank you again, Cindy, for all your help from a personal perspective and also for coming on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun and it's been my honour to uh, work with you, Katish. Thank you. So, all right, let's breathe in deeply. And breathe out slowly. Breathing in beautiful white, golden white light. Breathing out any stale and stagnant energy no longer serving us. Feeling calm and relaxed. As we breathe in the golden white light, we start to notice roots growing out from the soles of our feet, growing and spreading through Mother Earth, going down deeper and deeper in Mother Earth. Spreading right through Mother Earth, right down to the center and wrapping around the beautiful crystal at the center of Mother Earth. 
as the roots wrap around the crystal, you start to feel beautiful, unconditional love coming up through the roots, up through the soles of your feet, up your legs, and starting to wash over your whole body. You are surrounded and consumed by beautiful unconditional love as you continue to breathe in the beautiful white golden light this bubble of love expands all around you you are encased you are safe feeling lighter and brighter with every breath that you take lighter and brighter we start to lift off and float gently towards farther sky feeling ever so lighter and brighter with every breath that you take moving higher and higher feeling lighter and brighter and higher and higher breathing in beautiful golden white light moving ever higher up through farther sky higher and higher and as we move up we will find ourselves alighting in a beautiful garden we can hear the beautiful sounds of nature Henry has come to join us here you can hear the birds fluttering in the trees the bees buzzing and you find yourself walking along beautiful green grass ever so soft underfoot we're going to have a lovely little wander around noticing all the beautiful flowers and trees and all the glory that mother nature has to offer us we'll walk through this garden and continue on the path we're going to come to the edge of the garden as we come to the edge of the garden we're going to step through into another portal before you step through once you step through I want you to immediately look down at your feet and describe the environment that you're in. This is the environment in which you will meet your current spirit guide. Your animal guide will come to you in this environment. So when you're ready, take that step through look down at your feet and start at your feet to describe what you see I'm trying to get back to feet um, but when I went through the portal I ended up in the sky yeah <sighs> okay. so we're up in the sky and now we will call in your current animal spirit guide that is going to help you at this point in your current life to please come in and meet you
Can you see them coming? Um, my mind is not clear. It's confused. I see like butterfly wings and a hawk or eagle at the same time. I can see that. I can see the eagle. You can see the eagle? Eagle, yeah. I can see the eagle. I don't yep. get the butterfly wings, but we will pick up Well, the butterfly wings are like on my back. Ah, they're how... holding you up there to meet your spirit guide. All right, yeah, that's what, when I jumped through the yep. the portal, I got those butterfly wing things on my back, and then yep. the first thing I saw was the sharp beak. Yep, of the eagle. Would you like to ask your animal guide any questions while you are here? They're here um, to help you and assist you. Uh, why, why eagle right now? What's the sort of significance of eagle? Are they sending you a clear answer? Um, I've just got a feeling of sharp sharp vision and understanding clear eyes um, yep um but something about an indication of distance i was gonna say and and a Hold, holding yeah. self back higher overall perspective is coming through for me with the sight right okay yeah um something about it's good to look from above but don't forget to go down into the smalls as well mm-hmm and eat and eat an eagle looks for the insects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sense of freedom. Absolutely. But the eagle also has to nest. Yep, nest and rest, yes. They still need family, community. Companionship, yes. Companionship, yep, even though they go off alone a lot. Mm hmm. Um, yep, they need their alone time, but they need that, that companionship as well. Are you getting anything else? No, I just got feel sad feelings and then they went away. I was going to say because I have, I feel that that was all as well. That's why I was asking. Yeah, I felt like I wanted to cry, but then I thought, no, I don't really want to. It was just to do with that issue of feeling alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just seeing image of the eagle's nest. Yep. Um, Do you feel that you wanted to ask anything more because we can call them back? No, I think it was just about the yep. perspective, but needing to go into the detail as well about alone time, but being part of community and mm -hmm. relationships. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we will come back down to earth and step back through the portal into the garden. So with your beautiful butterfly wings, you should be able to gently bring yourself back down and step. I don't know about gently. <laughs> 
<laughs> I fell I fell on my bum in the grass and there's like a uh, a uh, like an oversized garden gnome that's animated laughing at me. <laughs> They're bringing the joy, reminding you to bring the joy into your life. You should it should have been a soft landing regardless because the grass is lush and soft. Yes. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm picturing it as bringing me joy, so hopefully it's bringing you joy too. <laughs> okay. We'll walk back across the garden, just enjoying beautiful Mother Nature. And as we get to the other side, we will start to bring ourselves back into our current consciousness. And back down to our earthly reality. And as we come across, we'll start to come back more into our present place, starting to wriggle our toes and our fingers, feeling more and more in our present circumstance. Noticing all around us, the chair we're sitting in, the room we're in, and we will bring ourselves back to the here and now. So, eagle. Yeah, I should have known that. I always see eagles. Yeah, look at that, see? So let's see what my magic book has to say about the eagle, more than what we have already uncovered. Okay, so eagle, there's an opportunity for you that you're considering and it would be best if you would take advantage of it soon. Mm. You'll have to think about that one, won't you? Mm. There will be a new beginning and a positive direction following a recent period of strife, one in which you've gained a great deal of stamina and resilience. Detach and rise above the mundane so that you're able to see your life and circumstances with a broader perspective and greater vision. It's time for a great spiritual awakening, one where your experience, where you'll experience a greater connection to the divine. This is an important time to get creative inspiration from the divine, so heed any guidance you receive. Whatever you put out, positive or negative, will now return to you in some form more quickly than ever. Did you notice exactly which type of eagle it was? Was uh, Do you remember the colour? No. No, because I didn't either, so I was just curious. I didn't notice either. I mean, the eagles that I see, the Australian eagles, you know, like when you go to Stradbroke Island and you see those, but then when you asked me then... Um, Did come to you? The, I, I got like a, a car caricature of an American bald eagle with, you know, the fly, American flag kind of an eagle. That's enough. Is that what you got? That's enough, yes, exactly. Bald eagle. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, because uh, there are slightly different, um, for slightly different eagles. Um, so if a bald eagle, and because that's what it came to you, and we have to listen to that because that's exactly what the eagle is telling us to do, um, you have an increasing ability to walk between the material world and that of spirit. Dive into your inner depths, paying close attention to any visions or inspirations that arise. Okay. Okay. Now, it also says... Um, recommends for when you should call on your eagle okay so when you're caught up in the little details of life and have lost sight of the big picture 
you've had some spiritual insights or revelations and want to interrogate them, integrate them, not interrogate, integrate them into your daily life, you have to face some major challenge as a result of a massive life change. You're in a period of struggle or difficulty, one where you get completely caught up in the mundane aspects of your life's drama. When an opportunity presents itself and you're not sure whether to act on it or not. Okay. Okay. I will send you this information as well. And it also has information here about if the eagle is your power animal or not, because we all have one particular power animal. Um, do you want me to read that out to you? I can. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. So if it is your power animal, you're a very spiritually evolved individual and a born leader and people gravitate quite naturally to you. You're willing to endure challenges and struggles because you're confident that you can meet them and you trust that they're necessary for your spiritual development. Even though you're an old soul, you must still go through various, various in, initiations I'm very sorry. I'm having my. I'm very tired right. today. I don't know why. That'll be me. I was going to say I don't usually have this problem, so <laughs> it's it's freaking me out a little bit. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you must still go through various initiations throughout your life that will ultimately lead you to living a complete, completely spiritually directed life. You're passionate and have a bit of a temper that you have to watch. One of your main life lessons is learning to conserve your energy and apply your focus to what's truly important. You take advantage of opportunities without hesitation and with a strong faith that there will be lessons or gifts that you'll discover in doing so. Pay attention to the sensations in your backbone as an in instinctual trigger to be more alert to what's going on around you. Okay. Okay. So that's if it is your power animal, because just because it showed up doesn't mean that it's your power animal. So you'll need to feel into that and see if you find that that's actually a fact. What I might do is I might read Wolf for you as well mm. to see if you feel more connected power animal wise to the wolf because um, you've already had the wolf show up for you at certain times uh, when you've needed that. Um, so, all right. So if the wolf is your power animal, you have a strong sense of family and community, an intuitive sense of social order, and are very affectionate with your friends and family. I can tell you personally, that's not resonating for me already as I'm reading it out. It doesn't feel right for you, but you, that's for you to decide. Um, you would much rather avoid confrontations, uh, but will fiercely defend yourself and your loved ones whenever necessary. You're very expressive verbally and non-verbally and can tell a story with a great deal of passion, sincerity and animation. You're a natural born teacher imparting knowledge based on experience more than from formal education. Although you're at ease with your closest friends and family in most other situations, you're actually quite shy. Now, to me, I, that just doesn't, I got no feelings, no sensations or anything with that, but that is for you to decide. Mm. Whereas the eagle, when I read out about the power animal of the eagle, that resonated like I got sensations in my body reading that out for you. But I have to say the, the eagle was definitely 100%, but having said that, the wolf is how I see myself, but how others don't see me. Mm, well, maybe that's why it doesn't resonate for me. Um, mm. If you like, I will send you the rest of the wolf, um, uh, the rest of the wolf information as well. Because um, there's definitely a, um, 
uh, in some of the other readings that I've done, one of the clear things that um, presents as a and it even came up in those things that we we you know the visitations that we did over the last few days was yeah. um, sense of self being different to perceptions of others, you know, like even with yeah. uh, our friends, um, they had a sense of who they were and they had a real upset about the fact that other people didn't see the the real the way self. they were. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah. that that resonated to me. So I would say eagle one, wolf two, and our uh, wolf comes in um, when the some of the limiting beliefs start rearing their head. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, I was going to say the wolf is definitely one of your spirit uh, guides. Absolutely. Yeah. Without yeah. question, because the minute I feel into that, I get the full body sensation. So that's there's no question there. And as you said, you've already seen him uh, uh, a few times uh, during your lifetime. Um, so I, I feel into that definitely. I, uh, there's a slight difference um, uh, in it, uh, whether it's just a spirit guide or a power, your actual power animal. Yeah, I don't think it's power animal. Yeah, I don't think that's exactly right. I personally don't think it's your power animal but it's definitely one of your strong animal guides. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And like here, so uh, if a wolf shows up, um, characteristics and behaviours that no longer serve your spiritual purpose are being culled from your consciousness. That makes that sense. Make cooperation a priority over competition. Valuable insights, ideas, and new new teachings are coming your way, so pay close attention. And as you said, they brought insights into what you needed uh, for your own health and, and things like that. Um, it's important to maintain your self-esteem and integrity and deeply trust in your inner knowing, even when you feel misunderstood or misaligned. You're being spiritually and physically protected at all times which fits perfectly with your experiences. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah interesting. Yeah, but I'll send Very you the good. rest of that because it's about, it's got about when you to call in your wolf as well. Um, and as you know, he's there to be called in as you need and the same as your, your eagle. Um, um, Question for you. Yes, go for it. When we were going up into the garden, Yes. And Henry the cat came in mm -hmm. and started meowing. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I don't know whether you could see what I was seeing, but it was like, um, for me, it was kind of like, uh, not Jack and the Beanstalk, but like going up a tree. Yep. And at each aspect of the tree, when Henry was meowing, I saw the animals that I didn't want it to be. Like, and then I had to I repel them away. I, I was going to say, I did not see them. No, yeah, I so I got a snake. Oh, wow. Um, a black panther. Wow. And, oh, I got a bat, like oh, a vampire yeah. bat. Because <laughs> I was like, I was watching it and then I'm like, no, this is, this is negative limiting beliefs or something coming up. And then I was like, oh, I hope they don't come with me. And then Henry started growling and I was like, oh, no, I'm supposed to show that I can just move the, the energy and they will go away. So I just went and moved the golden light away and then they. Yep. So um, it was just weird. I thought I wondered if that's normal to, to see. Because I got really thirsty when we first started. I was like, oh, my God, I think I need a litre of water. And I felt like the, the, the bat was at my throat wanting to drink. Yep, okay. Like, and I was like, oh, I feel really thirsty. And then I'm like, no, 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 you're not thirsty. You've just had a glass of water. Push it away. And then I was fine. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up each of those because I'm quite curious myself, right? All right, all right. So because the fact that they showed up, right, doesn't mean they're a guide for you, but because they showed up, okay, there's significance yep. in that. So okay. if a snake shows up, 
And hilariously, as per our discussion about snakes, look, there's a big picture of the snake and I can look at that and read it and it's all okay. Um, <laughs> you're about to go through some significant personal changes, so intense and dramatic that an oh. old self will metaphorically die as a new self emerges. Okay. You're going to feel a surge of energy that will sharpen your senses alert your mental faculties and open up new channels of awareness. You're about to resolve a long-standing issue, one that has required a great deal of your attention by seeing things in a new light. It would be a good time for you to start doing either tantric or kundalini. Yes, thank you, because <laughs> it wasn't coming. <laughs> I saw it and it's like, oh my God, I'm going to get so tongue tied. Yoga. Um, you'll experience a dramatic and unexpected physical or emotional healing very soon, coming from an unexpected source. Okay. So that's one. Then there was batch, you said. And then mm -hmm. yeah, in you. I don't know if I've got these yeah. in the right way, but this is the way they're coming to me. All right, you bat. There you are. Um, okay, so if we get a bat to show up, let go of those habits and attachments that no longer serve you and welcome the changes that are long overdue. The, adult, the ordeal that you're facing is a necessary part of your transformation and an initiation into a much more spiritually directed life. It's time to confront and conquer your fears trusting that doing so will bring about dramatic and beneficial changes. Mingle and socialize more with others, perhaps by joining ongoing classes or group activities that you think you'd enjoy. And then, Panther. Apparently, I can't find Panther. Oh, here we go. Um... Okay. Uh, take some time in solitude preferably in nature, for a full day. Be sure to pace yourself by providing times of rest and play during any intense cycles. Whatever goal you're pursuing, do not reveal too much about it until it's completed. Or this may interfere with its achievement. You'll be able to foresee events very vividly and accurately through dreams, visions, or feelings. A secret that's been kept from you will soon be revealed. This is a time for expressing yourself passionately in whatever you do. With persistence and steadiness, you'll attain your goal. Your intuition is heightened at this time, so pay close attention to your feelings and trust them. Hmm. That all ties in extremely well. Um, I'm going to send you all of those. Um, so you can have them. Um, so Jaguar comes under leopard, just so you know. Uh, Panther comes under leopard, so you know, sorry. Leopard, Panther, Jaguar, same thing. Um, yep. I think, man, for a minute I went blank. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Noting down what ones I, I want to send you. Um, yeah, that, that all uh, <laughs> implies that you're heading for uh, clarity on what you've been seeking, in my opinion. Um, mm. Like absolute clarity coming to you at this point in time, like you're coming right to that juncture. Um, for, yeah, clarity on it all and then moving 
straightforward. In your well, this is a full moon today, so right now we are in. Exactly. Like, literally, as we got on, it went full moon as of right that second. <laughs> well, look at that. Yeah. New beginnings. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome.